You're watching news now from Fox. I'm Daytona Everett. I'm joined by a writer for Fox, uh, Catherine Park. She's got a pretty interesting story here about a California man who wasn't too happy about his AT&T internet so much that he paid 10K to uh, put out some ads. Is that correct? That is very, very correct. <laughs> he was uh, very eager to... Uh, I guess vent his frustrations because he'd been dealing with it for a while and he honestly did what I'm sure we all wished we could do. This is not right. So I put the ad in the paper and believe me, it's money well spent. So you wrote this story. Can you just kind of take us from beginning to end what this 90 year old man, it's not just your average guy next door. This is a 90 year old man who is not happy about his internet. And just side note, I'm really impressed that he is on the internet so much and, and wants it to work as quick as it can, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, he, so basically it all just started off like, so he's been with AT&T, like even before it was AT&T, he, um, um, I think he said he had joined AT&T in like the 1960s, so. so. I've been with AT&T from the very, very beginning. He's been a long time customer with them. And up until about five years ago, he said that like, well, you know, streaming started to happen, like Netflix, Roku, and things like that were, were made available to him. But as soon as he started um, utilizing those services, it was like such terrible streaming quality. Um, he said he was paying for like 3.5 megabits. Um, so, you know, pretty decent streaming speeds. Um, it shouldn't have been an issue if it was provided, but he said all he was watching was like basically like free springs. He said it was like a slideshow. Do you know, I'm sure what buffering means. And uh, it was start and stop and start and stop. So uh, he, he dealt with that for five years. He was just like, he was trying to be patient. Um, he, and he saw that AT&T was advertising that, oh, they're getting the fiber optics put down. Um, they're going to have faster streaming services for all of the customers. So he was like, oh, well, good. You know, it's coming and just never came. You know, it was moving at a snail's pace for him. So he was like, okay, well, I'm going to call them now and I'm going to see like, hey, uh, maybe if I call and maybe badger them, you know, how customer service can be. If I badger them a little, maybe they'll do something about it. So I kept asking him, when will you give me this upgraded service? And he called and he called and he was like, nothing was happening. And he was just starting to get fed up with it, basically. So he decided, like, you know what? I'm going to get the attention of the CEO and I'm going to pay for an ad in the newspaper. I don't know. He didn't really explain how he just came to the newspaper conclusion. He just decided maybe this is the best way. He said, he said that the, the press was who he thought would be able to make moves for him, basically. So he, he, he contacted the Wall Street Journal, was like, I want to buy two ad spaces, one in Dallas, Texas, where at and is headquartered, and one in Manhattan, hoping that if he ran the ad in Manhattan, he could uh, uh, motivate investors to basically pressure at and to get oh this gosh. done. So, I mean, he was a motivated, um, he was motivated for sure. So, I mean, he spent uh, approximately $10,099 on both ads. And he said it was money well spent. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm not complaining. He was like, it was yeah. money well spent. I'm like, great. And believe me, it's money well spent. I mean, great for you. Um, but yeah, so he, uh, he, yeah, and it ran on February 3rd, I believe, it ran on um, page A7 of the Wall Street Journal. He both ads ran and uh that same morning that the ad ran so, um the uh, president of at&t's uh, like spokesperson contacted him like called him because he provided his phone and his email on the ad like hey <laughs> get back to me as soon as you see this and they did and uh, they called him and uh and basically they were like uh they didn't make like a solid solid promise but they're like we heard you we see you we're gonna see what we can do to kind of speed things up because you know laying down cables and new fiber optics and basically like new a new foundation anywhere is not cheap and it's not fast and he fully understands that he's just happy that like it it somebody noticed it 
So yeah, it was a he was a he was an interesting character to speak to. Well, so they reach back out to him, but is there a timeline on when his internet's gonna get faster? I asked him that. He said that he's just patiently waiting. They haven't given him like a solid ETA on they're like when like the trucks are going to be coming into his neighborhood and providing him with these new fiber optics to give him some faster streaming speeds. He didn't say when, but he said that he's optimistic. <laughs> he said that yes. he was positive. He was saying positive just because he's like, well, I mean, hey, like something happened. They called me that day, like they saw it. So he was being he was being very uh very very polite and happy about it. I mean, he wasn't like. Um, he certainly wasn't um, upset with the result. So, so far, no ETA, but uh, they noticed. So hopefully something will happen. So I am waiting patiently to see what they could do. She says we'll try to get that happening for you sooner. Well, we'll definitely be uh, keeping our eyes on, on that for him. But I, I do have a question that I hope that you asked him. What's he using the internet for? What does he use it for the most? <laughs> Streaming, like he watches movies and TV shows, like he, like you know, he, he, like anybody, we're stuck at home, and he's, you know, utilized that service to, you know, keep himself entertained. And he said he likes to watch movies and just watch shows, basically. But mm -hmm. it's so hard for him to do, it, it, especially like nobody wants to watch a buffering screen. Like who, who wants that? So sure. that's basically what he's been dealing with. So yeah, just pretty much entertainment, President like Joe all of us today. during these, uh, during these COVID times. Yep, stay at home times. Definitely need that quick internet. Well, what a fun story to kind of break up, break up the news cycle that we have. Uh, Catherine Park, thank you for joining us here on News Now from Fox. Thank you. And what a great story.